Hello, my name is Shane Johnston, Director of Schools for Jefferson County. I wanted just to provide everyone a few updates concerning some school initiatives and things going on in the Jefferson County school system as we approach the end of October. And uh, we are excited that we've been able to have school. We've completed one quarter of the uh, school year and we're already into the second grading period and everyone continues to work hard. So a big thank you to our teachers, our staff members, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, instructional assistants, and everyone that's involved, including parents, students, and our community members. Thank you for everyone working together during this difficult time to make sure that our students are provided an opportunity for academic and social success. I do want to provide some updates concerning distance learning days in the district. Uh, we do have some of those days scheduled and we have gone ahead and set those days for November. And we want to make sure you are aware of this as parents and as family members and community members. November the 2nd and the 23rd and 24th will be distance learning days for all students in the Jefferson County School System. Now that is this coming Monday, the first Monday of November, November the second and then the Monday and Tuesday of Thanksgiving week. In looking at the data from fall break where students and staff were away from each other for an entire week plus both weekends, uh, we did see a decline in the number of active cases involved in our schools and even the close quarantining that has to go on as well. So therefore the decision has been made in addition to this coming Monday, November the 2nd, that also Monday and Tuesday, November 23rd and 24th will be distance learning days for every student in the school system. Now these are still instructional days and students will have work to work on from home that combines both the use of technology and also some pencil paper work and additional readings and those type things. So your individual teachers and schools will be in touch with more specific information. Now, in addition to the district-wide distance learning days, there will also be two additional days that will be distance learning days in the month of November for Jefferson County High School students. Those days will be Wednesday, November the 4th and Wednesday, November the 18th. As you recall from the local media outlets and the reports and the information that I've shared, we have been able to bring along co-teachers as distance, distance learning support staff to help our elementary and middle school teachers in providing services and to help tutor these uh, distance learning students. However, when it comes to grades 9 through 12, this becomes more difficult because of the many certifications, the many course offerings, and all the many different aspects of individual classes where you may only have one class of students that is only offered once per day. So to find additional help becomes very difficult. And because high school students can manage for the most part on their own, uh, we have decided to implement to provide that additional support for those teachers uh, two additional days in November. And again, those days will be November 4th and on November the 18th. Now I do want to let uh, students know that in the event that you need additional help on the, uh, November 2nd and November 4th, we are going to initially open up uh, the high school setting to where if you are a distance learning student in any grade or a high school student that needs additional support or even tech support with your device, you can come by the high school during normal school hours and we'll provide either academic support or tech support and provide this additional support for the distance learning families. And again, that's on November 2nd and November the 4th. Now, I do want everyone to be aware that buses will be running uh, on uh, uh, November 4th and 18th. So if you're a high school student that wants to still come to campus, you will be given an assignment and, and uh, as far as you'll be uh, placed in a classroom or in a, a common area that you can work and have access to the internet and that may very well be the case in grades 9 through 12. It could be that it's a distance learning day but you struggle to have internet at home or you can get more done by coming to school or you may even have an academic question so you can still get on a bus like normal that day. Yeah, they will still be coming to the high school. So I, again we've thrown several dates out at you so just in summary of the distance learning days, distance learning days for all students are no November 2nd and November 23rd and 24th. And in addition to that, Jefferson County High School students will have November the 4th and November the 18th. I also would like to take just a moment and make everyone aware of the changing numbers that we're seeing in our community as it pertains to the coronavirus. Specifically in the last three, three and a half weeks, we have gone from in the low 90s as the community and we hit a high mark just a few days ago of about 165, give or take a case or two, active in the community. Now I want to reassure everyone, we continue to take the safety of all of our staff and students and fa uh, staff members uh, very, very serious and we are working to keep everyone as safe as possible. The numbers in the school system have stayed pretty much the same. We remain somewhere between 9 and 15 to 16 active cases at any one point in time. Uh, but the number of close quarantining students continues to go up. Uh, we are actually, we've been much higher than we are as of today when I'm recording this video. Uh, we're somewhere around 110 students that are in quarantine. That number fluctuates each day as students are returning to campus and others are being quarantined as well. 
But I do want to make you aware, as distance learning students are returning to in-person learning, and as more and more students are on a campus, we are going to have to continue to monitor this situation. Because where we were able to distance at a certain amount of space within a classroom, as more students are in a classroom, that becomes more and more difficult. Just simple math. If we had 14 students in a second grade classroom, it was easier to keep them apart than if we have 18 or 20 now in that same classroom. So parents, as we have told you all along, please continue to have a plan in place. And in the event that we have to modify what we're doing due to active COVID cases, or just simply to meet the guidelines of the Tennessee Health Department and the expectations of the local health department in terms of social distancing, uh, keep in mind that we are evaluating this, these numbers and you need to have a plan in place in the event that we were somewhere this school year to have to implement a situation where we had to stagger days and only some students come certain days or in the event whether it is mandated from the state or implemented at the local level where we have to have an extended building uh, closure you need to have plans in place obviously we know that's an extreme burden on parents and families and we will do our best should we get to that point to give you as much notice as possible so that you can have your plan put in place again we are sensitive to that the difficulty that would create with families it's not ideal for anyone but we are doing everything we can do to keep schools open to avoid a massive shutdown and not only our district but districts around the state and we appreciate your understanding and support in that so with the winter months ahead we know that we already are seeing some cases in the community of flu and those type things the health department would remind everyone that they encourage everyone to get a flu shot before Halloween which is coming up quickly at the end of the uh, week here but as quickly as you can if possible and uh, and you choose to do so uh, the health department encourages every student to make sure and staff member to have a flu shot this season. We will continue to monitor this situation and keep you up to date on the numbers. We post those on our website uh, each Monday as well, weekly numbers. But again, it is that close contacts as more and more students are coming. However, we do indeed want to take care of all of our students, both distance learning and in person. And in some cases, we are requiring some students to return to in-person learning for a better chance of their academic success. So again, it's a two-edged sword, uh, but we at the same time want to get as many kids in the building as we can if that's what's best for them academically. And at the same time, we have to monitor our ability to keep everyone uh, appropriately distanced. So I do want to take just a moment and let you know, as you've read in the uh, media outlets and heard on various outlets as well, there are numerous districts experience a shortage of substitute teachers around the state of Tennessee. Uh, due to staff members having to stay at home with their own children or staff members being quarantined or staff members even being sick. Uh, we're no different in the sense that we could use some additional help. If you're interested in becoming a substitute teacher, please contact the Central Office or Human Resources Department and we'll be happy to give you some more information on this, but we could always use some additional help in certain areas. We seem to always need some custodians, we always need a few extra bus drivers, and we certainly could use some help with some substitute teachers as well. Lastly today, I just want to give you a brief update as we've kind of complete the fall season of extracurricular events. I wanted to provide you an update before frustration uh, sets in on some issues that it's not really a school decision. We are following the TSSAA uh, general guidelines for uh, athletic events, even in our middle schools and even in our elementary basketball league. So as we transition from an outdoor setting of soccer and football and those type things, we're going to be inside and seating capacity is going to be limited. The conferences that the students are in are setting ticket guidelines on that. Uh, but again, it's not our goal to keep people away, but at the same time, in order for us to continue to have school and for these students to be able to enjoy an extracurricular event, we are going to be limiting the number of participants that can come. This was true in uh, the fall sports as well, but in outdoor stadiums that are bigger, the number can be bigger as well. So this will be an inconvenience, but at the same time, we are going to follow the state's guidelines, the health department's guidelines, TSSAA guidelines, and work together with the other schools in our conferences uh, to make sure that we can keep everybody as safe as possible. And we know it's not ideal, but on in an indoor setting, that changes the uh, circulation of air and the ability to socially distance in the stands and all of those kind of things, and including the expectations of masks, which is mandated by TSSAA, even for spectators. As a matter of fact, it says you're to sit six feet apart with a mask on. But in the event you decide to cheer or yell, you're actually supposed to be 15 feet apart. So we're doing the best we can do in a very difficult situation 
and we appreciate your understanding. Last announcement today, remind you this coming Tuesday, one week from uh, uh, tomorrow, next Tuesday, November 3rd is election day, and there will be no school for students or staff on that day as the local election commission utilizes multiple campuses for voting. So again, there will be no school on Tuesday, November the 3rd for students or parents. Thank you for everything that you do. Together, I'm confident we can continue to provide a high quality educational experience to every student. May we all continue to work together to help our students and staff be successful. Thank you and have a great day.